Hi, so welcome to today's video. So I'm going to go through the shapes of the molecules. So looking at the central atom and looking at the arrangement of the atoms and the electron pairs around the central atom and then applying the corresponding shape to it. So let's start off with a central atom. So I've just got some polystyrene balls and some, um, some sticks between them uh, to use for the model today. So we've got our central atom, we've got two atoms on either side. So the way that they would arrange themselves would be to maximise the distance between the two atoms. So they would be 180 degrees away from each other. So in the shape that we would label this would be a linear shape. So it's got a linear arrangement. Now if we were to introduce a third atom, it will change the way that they arrange themselves. So if we bring in our third one, it would stay on the same plane, but the other two would shift slightly to allow that one to come in. So we call this shape a trigonal because it's got the three, three atoms on it, and it's a planar because it's in the one plane. So it's a trigonal planar geometry for that particular shape. Now, if we were to replace one of those atoms, and instead I had a central atom with two bonding atoms and one lone pair, that would give us a bent geometry or bent shape for that particular compound. So the lone pair is still taking up the same amount of space, but you don't see that when you look at the shape. So you're just looking at the shape between the atoms. So we've got a bent conformation. So let's move into three atoms on the central atom now. So when I bring in my fourth atom, it will come in from either the top or the bottom, and then that will push the other ones down slightly. So they're on a slight angle, and we've got that, that one facing up. So this is our tetrahedral conformation. Okay, so a central atom and four bonding atoms. So tetrahedral. Now, if I was to replace one of these atoms with a lone pair, it doesn't matter which one I choose because it should look the same from every angle, but I'm not that great at making stick and ball models, so it is a little bit wonky donkey. But let's just take this one off here. So it should be 109 degrees for each of those um, angles. So that's my lone pair now, and these are my bonding atoms. And so this is the trigonal pyramidal that's left over. And if I take another atom off and put another lone pair in, I'm back to that bent conformation. Okay, so looking at the shape of the resulting atoms. So that's four. So I've got tetrahedral. So my tetrahedral shape. Trigonal pyramidal. And now we've got that bent. So if we bring in five groups, so bring in another one, put it in the bottom, and then these ones will uh, go more to the center. Okay, so this is the one, two, three trigonal. They're all in the same plane and it's bipyramidal. So there's a pyramid going up and a pyramid going down. So trigonal, bipyramidal. Now when you have five groups attached, when the lone pairs come in, they come in that, that middle position, so that planar position in the middle. So if I was to replace one of these bonding atoms with a lone pair, I would get this shape here. So that one is the seesaw, because it totally looks like a seesaw, or a sawhorse, depending on the textbook that you're looking at. So that's your seesaw. If I was to remove another one, so I have two lone pairs and three bonding pairs now, this one here is the T-shape. Okay, so it's the T-shape. And the next one, again, in that middle position here, and that would be your linear again. So we've got three lone pairs, that will accommodate that central position and you'll have your two bonding, top and bottom, 
which would give you a linear confirmation. So remember with five groups around it, you go for the central atoms and they get removed. So we've got the trigonal bipyramidal and then we have our seesaw. Okay, so our seesaw and then we have our T-shape. And then lastly, we have three lone pairs and two bonding, we get our linear shape. So let's go and have a look at six now. So I'll pop these back on. So the sixth group would come in that central part so you'd have four that are in the planar region in the middle. So in that flat region in the middle and you'll have one up and one down. Okay, so one, two, three, four in the middle, one up, one down. Now, this shape here is called the octahedral. So if you draw a line between each of these atoms, you would get eight triangles that would form. So you'd get one at the top, one at the bottom, and then you've got four gaps. So there'd be eight in total. So that's where the name octahedral comes from. If I was to remove one of these bonding atoms and change it with a lone pair, it would be the top and the bottom ones now. So with five, it's the middle ones. With six, it's the top and the bottom. So if I take one off, doesn't matter which one I take, this is my square pyramid now. So I've got a square pyramid. And then if I take another one, I've still got that square shape, but now it's a planar. So square planar, we've just got those middle ones. So with one lone pair, it's square pyramidal. And with two lone pairs and four bonding pairs, it becomes square planar. Okay, so that's a quick little intro into the shapes. So I'm going to go through some Lewis diagrams in the next video. So if you want to stay on and have a look at that one, uh, you can click ahead. Thank you.